Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Being Biotechnical. So in this video we are going to talk about Griffith's experiment. But before getting into the topic we firstly need to know that why do we need to know or why do we need to study about this experiment. So we need to know about this experiment because this experiment is a very very important experiment which was made in order to prove that DNA is the genetic material of all living organisms. So this experiment was made by a scientist named Frederick Griffith in the year 1928. But before 1928 there was a big confusion on this. Some people used to think that DNA is the genetic material while others used to think that protein is the genetic material. So there was a big conflict going on. But no one was having or nobody had a proof to justify their claims. However, in the year 1928, when Frederick Griffith experimented on this and proved that DNA is the genetic material. And that's why this experiment is known as Griffith's experiment. Now let's see what was the experiment that Griffith made in order to prove that DNA is the genetic material. So, he took or he made use of a bacteria named Streptococcus pneumoniae. He took a bacteria named Streptococcus pneumoniae and Streptococcus pneumoniae is a gram-positive bacteria that causes pneumonia. And in order to carry out his experiment, he needed a host body. And for this, he took a mice. So he made use of two things or he took two things for his experiment. One is a bacteria named Streptococcus pneumoniae which is a gram-positive bacteria and causes pneumonia. And the second thing which he took was a mice. And he took this mice as the host. So, Streptococcus pneumoniae has two different bacterial strains. Which means, when this bacteria is cultured in colonies in the lab, then two different kind of strains are obtained. So now, what are the two different bacterial strains? So, it is usually observed that few bacterias have shiny cell wall and that is due to the presence of a layer of mucopolysaccharide over the cell wall of few bacterial colonies. And the other bacterias have rough cell wall due to the absence of that layer of mucopolysaccharide over that bacteria. So, those bacteria with shiny cell wall are known as S strain. And the other bacterial strain with rough cell wall is known as R strain. And out of these two bacterial strains, the S strain means those bacteria with shiny cell wall are pathogenic or virulent, which means they can cause pneumonia. Whereas the R strain or those bacteria with rough cell wall are non-pathogenic or avirulent, which means they cannot cause pneumonia. So these two means R strain and S strain are the two bacterial strains are the two different bacterial strains of the bacteria Streptococcus pneumoniae. So always remember Streptococcus pneumoniae has two bacterial strains. One is the S strain and the other is the R strain. The S strain consists of those bacteria whose cell wall are shiny due to the presence of a layer of mucopolysaccharide over them. And the R strain consists of those bacteria whose cell wall are rough due to the absence of mucopolysaccharide layer. And out of these two strains of Streptococcus pneumoniae, the S strain is causative, which means the bacteria of this strain can cause pneumonia, whereas the R strain is non-causative which means it cannot cause pneumonia. So what Griffith did was he isolated both S strain and R strain. And after isolating both the strains, he took the R strain and injected it into the body of a mice. And then 
he took the s strain and injected it into the body of another mice and as we know that r strain is non causative or it cannot cause pneumonia so the mouse injected with r strain survived or lived but as we know that s strain is causative and it causes pneumonia so here the mice couldn't survive and died out of pneumonia so then what griffith did was he again took the s strain bacteria and this time he heated or he boiled this bacteria in order to heat kill the s strain bacteria and after heat killing this bacteria he again injected this heat killed bacteria or heat killed s strain bacteria into another mice and this time the mice survived because here the s strain bacteria were heat killed then again griffith took the heat killed s strain bacteria and he mixed this s strain heat killed bacteria with living r strain bacteria and after mi mixing this s strain dead s strain or heat killed s strain and living r strain bacteria he injected this mixture into the body of another mice and this time the mice died out of pneumonia so now there must be a question in your mind and that is how and why did this mice died out of pneumonia because r strain cannot cause pneumonia and s strain was heat killed so what was the reason behind the death of this mice so the answer to this question is that the s strain was although heat killed and its protein was disrupted due to the heat treatment but the dna of the s strain was there in the solution itself and the dna was not disrupted due to the heat treatment and was present as it is in the solution so when the naked dna of the s strain or the virulent s strain was mixed along with the avirulent r strain then the virulent dna of the s strain enters into the r strain bacteria by the process of transformation means the entry of a naked dna of the s strain into the bacteria of the r strain is known as transformation process and this transformed r dna bacteria now has the dna of the s strain which is virulent so when the virulent dna or virulent strain was injected into the body of the mice then the mice died so from here griffith concluded that dna is the genetic material as the dna of the virulent s strain could kill the mice so with this our topic griffith's experiment is over i hope you would have understood the whole topic clearly so if you found this video informative then please do hit the like icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel